Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I have the Adidas Ultra Boost 22. And whether you're a runner, sneaker enthusiast, or just looking for a comfortable shoe to kick around in, there is just so much cool tech that you're gonna wanna see in these shoes. Let's get right into it. And starting off in the uppers, this is an entire bed of Adidas' Prime Knit, which contains yarn that's 50% recycled polyester and 50% recycled ocean plastic, which is pretty cool. Now, when I first put these on, I was a little bit dubious of them, just because it is just one big booty liner and it is that really kind of expandable Prime Knit that Adidas makes. To my surprise, these TPU winglets on the medial and lateral side do provide a lot of stability in the shoe and a lot of running economy in the shoe. I think what also kind of gives the upper a little bit more stability is how high the heel counter is. It really locks your Achilles into the shoe. So whereas when I was first putting them on, I kind of thought I'd be trying to drag the shoe along because the uppers are so elastic. The really high heel counter and the TPU winglets give just enough stability and just enough security that you really never feel like you're dragging the shoe along and the shoe is light enough to where it's really kind of pushing you along with that Adidas Ultra Boost, which I'll get to when we get to the midsole. And just as an aside, if you've watched this channel enough, you'll know that I'm a big sucker for just little details and shoes. And if you look at this just little pink tab here in the upper of the shoe, that is right where the laces will come down over the top of your foot. And if you look, it's a pretty hard material and it's got foam underneath of it. So even though these uppers are ridiculously light, expandable, more elastic type uppers, right where those laces would dig into your foot, there is some protection to that. So that's just one little detail I think is just really neat. And just putting that prime knit upper through its paces on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, that Dremel just barely got into that green underside woven layer, which is actually pretty good durability for more of an elastic woven upper. And even on the opposite side of those uppers, you can see on the inside here, there is also an extra toe guard here on the inside of the shoe. Now, of course, these shoes are not meant for real rugged trail running. However, for a shoe that's made of an entire elastic yarn type bed in the uppers, these will last a pretty long time, even to just really strenuous running, or even just to your own foot kind of abrading it from the inside or any kind of debris you might encounter outside. All right, but getting into the midsole teardown, what I just find super interesting is there's actually a difference between Adidas Ultra Boost and Boost. Now, Adidas Ultra Boost borrows technology from Adidas Bounce Foam, not necessarily in the composition of the foam because Ultra Boost is still just ETPU. It's expanded bubbles of plastic. However, Ultra Boost borrows that same Aramis technology that Bounce Foam is made from. Now, that technology is the same stuff they use to inspect the hulls of the space shuttle so that they can tell where the shuttle needs to be stronger and where it can be more flexible so it can withstand you know, going up in space. Now, how that's utilized for shoe foam is that they're able to map the surface area of the foam and then kind of map where it needs the most density and the least density in the shoe. And they can actually kind of move density around in the midsole so that you're getting the most support where you need it and the most flexibility where you need it as well. And so when you're running in an Adidas Ultra Boost shoe and you kind of start to think to yourself, man, this feels just a little bit more plush. It feels a little more responsive, a little more energy return than say a standard Boost shoe. That's not in your head. It was designed that way. But I think my favorite part of the midsole the Ultra Boost is the shank. Now, if you look here, the shank on the 22s is this pink piece of plastic that goes all the way from the junction of the mid and the rear foot all the way up here into the forefoot. And in the forefoot, it expands here to the medial and lateral side. And what I love about that is it gives so much stress shielding and so much support, but also keeps the shoe pretty darn light. Now you don't really need it as much in the rear foot because of that huge stack of boost foam back there. So it still stays pretty supportive. So if you're a rear foot, mid foot, or a forefoot striker in these shoes, they're going to give you some protection and longevity in your run. And just kind of showing that engineering at work. If you look at the jump height test, where I always do this while serving a tennis ball so I can really isolate the lower leg and thus the shoe. I got 36 centimeters of jump height in these, which is one of the better running shoe jump heights I've gotten and far blows away any other boost shoe that I've done. And I also think that's because, well, the forefoot has a decent stack in it, but also because it has a very long shank, which just does give a little bit more snap. Plus that ultra boost is just a little bit more responsive than regular boost foam. And the shoe is just pretty light. So it just gets off the ground easy. But what I was most interested in in the ultra boost was the outsole tread. Now these are made of that cotton continental better rubber. Now, what I found interesting about that was, is when they started making rubber for Adidas, they actually started from wet weather motorcycle tires, and they actually found that that rubber was too tacky for people. So they actually had to take down the tack in that. And from that, they were kind of able to dial in how much tack you needed, because they went from a ridiculously gripping outsole rubber, 
and they were able to kind of take that down to where it was gripping enough to give you enough stability, but also easy enough to kind of get a more fluid gait, which was really nice. Now, what I like about this is it's a mixture of translucent kind of colored rubber, as well as just regular black rubber. And on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, the more clear rubbers actually were a lot harder, barely got a scuff on that pretty hard compound rubber. However, on the black rubber, a little bit worse, about a millimeter and a half of damage. And interestingly enough, the durometer also backs that up with the translucent and more clear rubber being much harder durometer than the black rubber. So as you can see, they've put the harder rubber going around the periphery, and then kind of the softer rubber on the middle of the shoe so you can get more tack and more tactile feel underneath the ball of your foot. And what that's gonna do is give you better traction on a multitude of different surfaces or a multitude of kind of wet or dry weather type conditions. And I realize I kind of sound like a fanboy of Continental Rubber Tires. However, you know, when I was researching this company as well as like Goodyear and some other tire manufacturers that have gotten into the shoe space, I've noticed that they all make these really substantial claims that they're this percentage more durable or have this percentage more traction. And I'm always thinking to myself, percent greater than what? What are you comparing it to? Are they 30% more tacky than an Adidas Stan Smith? Are they 30% more durable than the Nike original Cortez, the Nike Alpha Fly? I mean, what are you comparing it to? However, I just found in personal use that this was a tremendously good combination of durability and tackiness and just tactile feel. But also when I was kind of looking this stuff up, I found that this rubber actually holds the world record for steepest 50 meter sprint. They actually went up a ski jump hill. And now I know most people are not gonna be needing these for that type of ascent. However, it just shows you that these actually do grip really well, but also have enough durability and enough ruggedness to kind of get you through on a trail, blacktop, or even some shale. And getting into the fit of the Ultra Boost 22, you know, because the uppers are so expandable, they're gonna expand to your foot. If you are a wide foot and want a one-to-one -one fit, you can go standard size. However, if you do want a little bit more room in these, you can go up that half size. I'll just warn you, if you go up too high in these shoes because it is an elastic upper, you may find yourself kind of floating around in them. So I would try to go for that one-to-one -one fit. So if you can, I would go true to size. Surprisingly, these will fit a high arch, neutral arch, or even a flat foot, even though that shank is all the way on the bottom of the shoe. Because these two TPU winglets, they do give a surprising amount of arch support. And that was really surprising because it's not connected to the strobo board. However, because they are very strong and because that Ultra Boost, I think has a little more density in the arch, they still do give quite a bit of arch support. The one problem with that is because the ankle collar is so low here, it is gonna be hard to get a more bulky orthotic in there. So if you are gonna put an orthotic in these, it better be a pretty low profile one or you will start pushing out of the shoe. And in terms of runnability in the 20s, twos, you know, they do better the more you put into them. These are really economical running shoes. So the more and more miles you put into these, kind of the more benefits you're gonna see from them just because the Ultra Boost has such good energy absorption and because the density under your arch and kind of the shank just gives you a lot of economics when running and kind of just the engineering and the ergonomics of the heel to toe drop. These are really good if you are on some serious hills. I know in my area in Pittsburgh, this whole area is hills. And I notice either going up steps or going up an incline, these shoes really do give you a lot of energy return and give you a little bit of a boost, no pun intended, going up the hills, as well as coming down the steps or coming down a hill. These definitely take a lot of shock out of your lower leg. But what I found really interesting about the Ultra Boost is I kind of like them more for work than anything, because my job, I am on my feet all day, whether I'm in the hospital, a personal care home, or just my office, I am up and down quite a bit. And I found in these, you know, at the end of the day, my feet felt more resilient than pretty much any other shoe that I've had on this year. They're great if you're just wanting them for walking, a comfortable shoe to wear all day, or you're using these to put some serious mileage on. But of course, love to hear your thoughts on the Ultra Boost 22. Are you looking to pick these up or what shoe are you looking to pick up right now instead? Let me know in the comments down below. And speaking of all the characteristics of Boost, Ultra Boost, and Bounce Foam, if you you want to see a deep dive into the differences between bounce and boost foam make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below respect your rubber and foam i'll see you in the next video